three, two, one. Hey, Dave. Charles Gross here. Happy to be back again for your annual Tony show. And I've got a great announcement for you. I will be performing my play, How I Found an Affordable Apartment on the Upper West Side of Manhattan Without Really Trying, at this year's United Solo Festival in October. For information, go to unitedsolo.org, or better yet, follow me on Twitter at 2 Isle. that's the number 2 and then Isle, and you can find out all about my play and about Two on the Isle, the New York theater scene, which I do with Leslie Hoven Blake. The Tony Awards. I'm always interested in who was nominated, but I am often fascinated in who was not nominated. And there have been some very interesting omissions this year. First and foremost, To Kill a Mockingbird. Now, the Broadway production of the Harper Lee novel, adapted by Aaron Sorkin, was amazing. So why was it snubbed? Well, I have a theory. A lot of small theater companies had paid for the rights and financed productions of a version of Mockingbird that has been in circulation for 50 years. The producers of the Broadway production got wind of this, and they shut it all down. So a lot of small companies who innocently thought that they were legally procuring the rights for this other version, they paid for the rights, they paid for the productions, they did their marketing, they were already selling tickets, they had to shut down these productions and face a major loss or risk being sued out of existence by a major Broadway producer. Atticus Finch certainly would not have approved of this action, and apparently neither did the Tony nominating committee. Then there's Pretty Woman. No, I'm not suggesting that it should have been nominated for Best Musical, and I am certainly not suggesting that it should have been nominated for Best Score. But Best Book of a Musical? Absolutely. This book was written by the late Gary Marshall and J.F. Lawton, and it should have been nominated. Yes, they borrow a lot from the movie, but you know what? Alan J. Lerner borrowed a lot from My Fair Lady, and that worked out pretty well. Also, Samantha Barks, who bravely stepped into the Julia Roberts role and succeeded, should have been nominated. Finally, Eric Anderson, who played multiple roles in Pretty Woman, notably the hotel manager, did an amazing job, and he really should have been nominated for Best Supporting Actor in a Musical. Finally, and hold on to your hats, King Kong. Yeah, King Kong, the come for the gorilla and stay for the gorilla adaptation of the classic movie. Now, I would have been shocked had it been nominated for Best Musical, and I am glad to note that it was nominated for Best Scenic Design. But the amazing life-size Kong was a tour de force combination of puppetry and animatronics, and I really do think it should have gotten a special award. And while I'm on this subject, I also think that Christianity Pitts, who played the play Ray role, should have been nominated because her scenes with Kong were the highlight of the show. Well, that's all the time I have for this year. Follow me on Twitter at 2 Isle. That's the number two and Isle. Find out about my play, how I found an affordable apartment on the Upper West Side of Manhattan without really trying. And, of course, Two on the Isle with Leslie Hoban Blake and yours truly. Dave, always a pleasure, and I'll see you again next year.